Let's knock off the waste from the previous finial. I can eyeball the centres of these. Very yeah, good. The position of the pommels is pre-marked. It's just a matter of cutting them with the long point of the skew. And then rough out to the maximum diameter. And do this end it's the same. Cut the pommel. I tend to rough one end to the diameter and then it's just a simple planing cut the other way to get to the correct size. A little touch tells me if there's any flats. And with the storyboard, small nicks, so I can accurately mark the transitional points. I'll then do as much as I possibly can with the skew before anything else. This little bead near the pommel's a little bit tricky. And do the ball shape. Again, just slicing cuts with the skew. Reduce the shoulders where the cove will go. A V cut here because this diameter has to be reduced this particular pattern. We remove some of the waste at the end. Take three quite aggressive cuts to get close to the size for this end. The tip is very close to the size of my tail stock to give me a guide. And on one nice refining cut and move to the drop finial. Again, V cuts for the positions and that tricky little bead. And remove the waste here. There's slightly more waste on this end, so I avoid touching the drive spikes. I've got a sphere shape on this end and the shoulder of a quarter. And move to the half inch spindle gauge. Finish that quarter off. Nice clean cut to the sphere. And the two codes. While I'm turning codes, I tend to watch the, the top profile so I can see that I'm getting the correct shape. Always point the bevel in the direction to start so you know, nice crisp edges to the details remove a little bit more of the waste quick look over and I can see I want to refine this ball at the end now rub over with sandpaper. These particular roof finials are going to be painted. So a 180 sandpaper is more than adequate for that. Really just refining any slight defects. There's not too much sanding required. Slicing the timber basically gives it a very clean surface. Now that I've finished standing, if I just grab this sample to show you what it's meant to look like. There we go, let's move it over there. Right, we can now cut off. It's been cut off both ends, you have to be careful. So I cut off as close as I dare there. And we cut the sphere off, taking small amounts and not putting any pressure on the end to bruise it. We cut it off leaving a very slight nib which I then just slice off with the skew. Slice off the other end. If there's anything left on we can just touch it with sandpaper and there we go.